Who's your commander? Good luck. Equip. Move to combat. Resolves. Okay. Now, before you attack Does anyone have an answer? Well played. Good game. Hello everyone, my name is DJ. This is the Jumbo Commander YouTube channel. And today I wanna to talk about some underrated and underplayed commanders. Today I'm gonna to introduce to you three different commanders, three different commander decks. And I think all of them are criminally underplayed, so maybe one of them will inspire one of you. Let's start off first with Yenit Cryptic Sovereign. Yenit Cryptic Sovereign is two white, blue, black for a three, five legendary Sphinx with flying, vigilance, and menace. Whenever Yenit Cryptic Sovereign attacks, reveal the top card of your library. You may cast it without paying its mana cost if its mana value is odd. If you don't cast it, draw a card. Yenit is a big mana deck with a big restriction when it comes to deck building. I think that might scare a few people away, but I love just looking and finding all of those interesting, odd interactions. I also like when you can get corner case scenarios, like for example, Extinction Event. It's an even card, but you can always choose even and have this sort of one-sided board wipe. I like finding little gems like that, but let's get to the heart of this Yenit deck and how it operates. Well, it's a big mana deck, and so we're gonna have quite a bit of ramp and hopefully ramp into our Yenit. It only takes one swing for Yenit to be able to cast something huge and odd and fun. So the fun of Yenit Cryptic Sovereign is finding your own odd spells, picking and choosing, and figuring out what you're gonna put in your deck. Uh, I've got a couple that I really love. Um, we're in blue and black, so I really like the stealing element of it. So I like uh, Agent of Treachery, Elder Brain. I really like Ember Cool, the Promised End, stealing your turn. I like uh, Rise of the Dark Realm, stealing everything, or Kiora, Best the Sea God, stealing some stuff. So I definitely have a little bit of uh, stealing synergy in there. I've also got a lot of board control in this deck because I might have to cast my seven or nine drops. And so I'm gonna want cards like Sarah's Emissary or Toxril, uh, the Corrosive, interacting with my opponent's board. I'm also gonna want cheaper things than that. I mentioned Extinction Event, but I'm also including like Dam and Slash the Ranks and Tragic Arrogance because those can be cast with my Yenit on the battlefield uh, and keep that intact. The other thing I've paid particular attention to are kind of modal spells. Uh, spells that could be really good if cast off of Yenit, but still work just fine in the early game. So things that are awesome have been like Amiria's Call and Seagate Restoration, big spells that do big things, but they're just lands in the early game. Uh, also, uh, Angel of Ruins. I like that a lot. You can just plane cycle it away if you need that planes. Or cast it off of Yenit and get that sweet like three for one value. Uh, similarly, we've got Temporal Mastery. If I draw this as a top deck, it's two mana to take an extra turn. If I'm getting extra hits in with Yenit, that's fantastic. But if I happen to flip it off Yenit, you know, cast it for seven, get an extra turn that's so good. In fact, extra turns are so good, you could increase the count in this deck a lot and have it really perform. Uh, I think it's more fun without them, so I just have this one because of the sort of top deck synergies. And speaking of top deck synergies, like we're gonna be hitting great stuff with Yenit because we have a full complement of ways to manipulate the top of our library. I'm just gonna talk about a couple in each category. Uh, Vergoth, Blood Sky Sire, Boast to set up the top of your library. I really like Doom Whisperer. Not only does it punch in, but you're only using life to surveil, getting you down to that card you really need. Uh, another surveil mechanic is Dakon Shadow Slayer. This is kind of removal, but then also surveils if you have your Yenit on the battlefield and need to set things up. Aminatu is great if you're blinking something like that Agent of Treachery, but then of course you can draw a card and put a card back on top of your library. Whenever you have access to put something from your hand on top of your library, well that's really good because odds are you have more cards in your hand than just the scry. But sometimes scry is all you need. Elminster is fantastic. You draw a card and scry too. That could get you to what you need. But I love the synergy with Elminster because sometimes you could just minus three Elminster and then flip over a Toxroll or an Emrakul and suddenly you have seven, 13, one, one flyers really pressuring your opponent. And that hits super early. I like that it plays on two different levels. In Artifact, Sensei's Divining Top is great for setting up at the top of your library, but again, a little bit better is Scroll Rack, because again, that lets you stack from your hand, and you could have more options to get exactly what you want on top. 
Instants and sorceries are full of ways to manipulate the top of your deck. We've got things like Vampiric Tutor, Limb Duel's Vault, Brainstorm, Ponder, Preordain, so much stuff so that we're confident that we can get exactly what we want on top of our library. And not only is this to trigger Yennet, this is also to smooth out our draws, to hit our land drops, to get those board wipes when we need them, to get into the late game so that we can just cast our seven drops. Amazing. And that's what makes Yennet so good. It's got the reliability to make sure that you hit your land drops, board wipe to stay in the game, and then just cast your seven drops, or you swing in with Yennet, you land something huge, and suddenly the game is thrown all out of whack. So you have these two totally different ends of the spectrum. One is crazy explosive and fun around that deck building restriction, and the other one is reliable, having you draw cards, smooth things out, play your game. Having access to both of those modes is really fun and makes this deck super flexible. Next up, we have Kozilek the Great Distortion. Kozilek the Great Distortion is eight colorless colorless for a 12-12 legendary creature, Eldrazi. When you cast Kozilek the Great Distortion, if you have fewer than seven cards in hand, draw cards equal to the difference. It's got menace and discard a card with converted mana cost X, counter target spell with converted mana cost X. I love Kozilek. Not only does it refill your hand and give you ability to counter your opponents when you need to, it's just a 12-12 menacing chonker. This'll take people out in two turns with commander damage. Kozilek has its own deck building restriction. Because it's colorless, you can't just go to your list of staples and pull out uh, your board wipes or your single target removal and throw them in this deck. You have to really think about what you're gonna include to answer certain threats. Well, let's go through some of the normal things that we'd want in this deck. If we're talking about ramp, well, this deck has some great ramp because ramping in colorless is fantastic. Because you have cards like Worn Power Stone, Hedron Archive, Thran Dynamo that really boost you from this mid-level ramp to huge ramp. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get up to big, big spells in this deck. Um, but before we get to the big spells, let's see how we're going to get there, because we don't have all those choices of board wipes like we did in the Yennet deck. We are running things like All is Dust at seven mana. Oh, but All is Dust is so good. It's going to basically take out everyone else's board and leave your own intact. Uh, we're going to complement that with something like Ugin the Spirit Dragon, which does something similar. Uh, what about single target removal? Well, again, we don't have easy single target removal. If we want to take out something small, we're going to rely really heavily on things like Walking Ballista. Hopefully, we can get up to things like Duplicant or uh, Ugin the Ineffable or Karn Liberated. Uh, Ugin the Ineffable, by the way, playing a great multi-role. I love that it makes colorless spells cost two less. To me, the mana base is something really special in this deck. We don't need to think of all of these different mana requirements. Instead, we can focus on utility lands. You know, some lands in this deck are going to just be for producing extra mana, like Ancient Tomb, Shrine of the Forsaken Gods, or Eldrazi Temple. Some of them provide a lot of utility, like Blast Zone, blowing things up, uh, Labyrinth of Scophos, or Mystifying Maze, protecting us. They could also offer a lot of card draw and card advantage, like Arch of Araska, War Room. Oh my gosh, I love it. Sanctum of Ugin in the late game, giving us access to our deck. Same thing with Haven of the Spirit Dragon, maybe getting some of those Ugans back onto the battlefield again. Inventor's Fair, searching for the artifact that we need. Eye of Ugin, allowing us to pull Eldrazi after Eldrazi out of our deck and take over the game. One thing that I like a lot is adding some small elements of stacks to this deck, just a little bit of taxation to slow our opponents down so that we can start landing Eldrazi and taking over the game. Cards like Wandering Archaic. It could be great. It could give us access to some instants and sorceries that we wouldn't normally have access to. But of course, we're going to tax our opponents in multiple ways. We're going to add in Lodestone Golem, Sphere of Resistance, maybe even Trinisphere, making every cheap thing cost more because a lot of our deck is pretty expensive. Uh, we're going to punish our opponent with Torpor Orb. Some of our Eldrazi have awesome cast triggers, not enter the battlefield triggers. So Torpor Orb shutting some players down could definitely throw a wrench in their works. I also really like God Pharaoh's statue. It's a lot to get this down, so it's not really punishing people in the early game, but Commander's a big man of format, and so I've had this played against me, and it is miserable to play two extra for everything. So why is this deck exciting? Well, 
every card in here does something. The mana base is interesting, exciting, and customizable. There is a deck building restriction where you have to figure out how to handle certain situations with a colorless card pool. But of course, you have big Eldrazi. You're refilling your hand, you're interacting with your opponent, and sometimes you just chonk people out with 12 menacing attacking commander damage. It ends up being such a fun deck. All right, I got one more commander that is underplayed and underappreciated. You should check out Rolesk Apex Hybrid. Rolesk Apex Hybrid is two green, green, blue for a four, five legendary human mutant. It's got flying and trample. When Rolesk Apex Hybrid enters the battlefield, put two plus one plus one counters on another target creature you control. When Rolesk dies, proliferate, then proliferate again. I think people were put off by Rolesk because when he was initially released, that proliferate proliferate didn't work very well. You had to send him to the graveyard in order to get that trigger. Now that's not the case. Go back to the command zone, still get that double proliferate. And it's that double proliferate that is so enticing and so powerful. So let's think of all the different things that we can proliferate. Well, we can proliferate plus one plus one counters. In fact, Rolesk distributes plus one plus one counters. That's great. There's tons of cards in magic history that interact with plus one plus one counters, but I want to proliferate more. Uh, there are other types of counters like shield counters. Great. We'll take a look at those too. Uh, I'm also excited about Planeswalker Loyalty. That is some of the best proliferate targets that I can think of because you can play a Planeswalker and then proliferate, proliferate, maybe even double proliferate, get it up there. And then suddenly people can't do anything. Your Planeswalker ultimates and then you end up taking over the game. I'm also a big fan of expanding my mana with proliferate, uh, Astral Cornucopia, Everflowing Chalice, Empowered Auto Generator. All of these, you can proliferate the counters on it to make them tap for huge pieces of mana. Uh, but of course we can proliferate other things too. I know the one that you're thinking of. We can infect our opponent and proliferate those infect counters and take over the game in that way. I don't have a ton of infect in this deck, maybe a little bit. I got Blighted Agent, a great place to stick counters. It can definitely threaten people. I got Plaguemur, just a fantastic little mana dork. If you're talking about artifacts, of course, I'm running like Grafted Exoskeleton. I'm also running like Triumph of the Hordes. That's pretty good too. I'm also running one of my favorites, Corrupted Conscience, steal your big creature, and then that's got Infect, so I'm swinging in with it. I also got to mention Viral Drake, because it has Infect. It's got Evasion, and it has Proliferate as an activated ability on it. Uh, there are lots of different ways to proliferate. Uh, of course, it's on our commander, um, but are we just going to send our commander into death? Not always. Uh, what a lot of decks do is they clone the commander, and then Legend rule the clone away to get that double proliferate. We haven't gone all in on cloning, but we definitely have a couple. We've got Phantasmal Image because it's one of the most efficient. Uh, I also like Undercover Operative because it has a shield counter and shield counters and other counters, they're synergistic. A uh, Spark Double synergizes with our Planeswalkers and gives plus one plus one counters, although it won't send our creature immediately to the graveyard because it gets rid of uh, Rolesk's legendary claws. Still pretty great. So what makes this deck really fun is how it wins on a bunch of different levels. And it feels like you can't stop the proliferate. Uh, if I infect someone, well, then it's only a matter of time before I proliferate, 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 and that person dies of infect. Maybe I just start stacking my counters and make a big creature. Plus one, plus one counter synergies and go wide synergies are perfect for this deck. We're going to support them with like doubling season, branching evolution, Simic Ascendancy, Hardened Scales, all sorts of great stuff. We could just smash in and kill someone, bio shifting all the counters from one thing onto another, getting tons of damage in. Uh, we can get these planeswalkers going, proliferate them up, ultimate them, and win off the back of these ultimates. There are so many different ways to uh, leverage counters and use proliferate that I feel like this makes the deck super diverse and really fun to play. All right, we got Yenit, Cozy, and Rolesk. What do you think? Are these decks awesome or what? I think that they're awesome because uh, there's a lot of different ways to play them. They can get really big and over the top and making sure that your deck has these over the top plays makes it really, really fun. Uh, but also it's not a glass cannon. It's not like a magical Christmas land. You know, these decks are built fundamentally so that you can just curve out and stay in the game and play with everyone. If you want to pick up some of the cards from these decks, you should check out Cool Stuff Inc. They're the sponsor of the entire Jumbo Commander YouTube channel. And when you do, make sure you use the coupon code JUMBO5 because that'll save you 5% off your order. 
I also want to thank my patrons. They're amazing. They support this channel every single day. Thank you, patrons. And thank you for watching this video. Hey, let me know in the comments down below what other underrated commanders there are, because hopefully people like this video. Hopefully people maybe subscribe. I don't know. I could be lucky there, but hopefully people like this style of video. And then we get more excited about underplayed, underutilized, but really awesome commanders. Art of Art. See you later. Bye.